Welcome to Jackal DIY and Tech. Today we'll be making a dummy battery for this Canon SX40HS camera. Why do I need one? Well, I only have one battery and if I want to make overhead shots like this one, battery cord, I need a longer battery life. What do we need for a dummy battery? Well, you need a camera that has a hole for a cable or you have some latch, like this one. Maybe it's not visible, but this will latch where you can put the cable through. So usually you would put the battery in and you have to close it. And then you can turn the camera on and do anything that you want. So what do you need for this project? And this will be a simple dummy battery. Ideally, you do have a battery, so you can test it out. In this case, it says 7.4 volts and 920 mAh. So in this case, you would need a charger with 1 amp. But new cameras have batteries that can probably use 2 amps. So first, take note of the positive and the negative on the battery. We'll take a look what the voltage is. So the voltage is 8.34 volts. And this is what you need. So about 8.3 volts for the camera to operate normally. And in this case, you also need one amp. Now I wanted to do this circuit, which has over voltage protection. Now this circuit does work. I'm missing a diode here, but you can set the voltage. And if the output is greater than what the value of the diode is, it will get limit to that voltage. And if it gets too high, the voltage will drop down. And this LED indicates if the voltage that you have specified is in the range that you want. Now why can't I use this? I think this has to do with the transistors that I have on hand. They don't provide enough current. So at most the camera turns on for a second and then it turns off. So we'll use a simple version and we'll just use this step up converter. Now we have the voltage in plus and minus. This has a micro USB port and it also can come with USB-C. So this will allow me to use my phone charger. I can also connect it to the PC via the USB or you can also use a power bank. And with this potentiometer, you can specify what the output voltage will be. So if I connect it, this has 5 volt output at 2 amps. And if we take a look at the voltage on the output, this is the voltage that I have already set. It's at 8.27 volts. So I can increase it a little bit. If you go clockwise, this will increase the voltage. If you go counterclockwise, this will decrease it. So something like that. Now this is all that you need for the simple version. You will just put some contacts to the fake dummy battery. So let me show you how you can make it and what you may need. I will provide all of the links to the items that I've used. So this is a plastic box. I made a cutout for the USB cable. I made another cutout for the power plug. And on the top, this was meant to be a hole for the LED, which was for this circuit. I can still use this cover with an LED so that I know that this is running. And inside, we'll have to cut out a PCB. This one is a little bit too thin but it's just enough for this to fit on. I suggest you cut it snugly, so this one will fit very snug, it doesn't move up or down. I suggest you also have a glue gun, so that you can glue it in place. And as for this, you want to position this all the way to the front. So this can look something like this. Previously, I've done it with two pieces of 
wire in the front so that this will not move when you push the connector in and it also won't move out when you unplug it because all of the holes I've used and soldered them so this does not move. Now what I think I'll do is use another PCB, put it something like this, put the LED here and you need a 1 kilo ohm resistor so that the LED doesn't burn out. And after that you need some piece of wire to connect it to the ending plug. As for the dummy battery, the final result is this. I will show you how I made it. It was a little bit sketchy but it does fit in the camera and I had to use a lot of hot glue. So this is the other end of the plug. We have the plus and the minus. That is all that I need for this battery. So plus and minus. I don't need anything else because this camera only has three pins. And the middle pin is for the camera battery level, which I don't need if the camera is plugged with a dummy battery. So just so you see that it fits in. Put it in, it also clips. I put the cable down here to this notch and like so. So let me show you how you can make it. So these are my contacts for the battery. The battery will look like this. So this will be the plus, this will be the minus, and this will be on the bottom. I have wrapped the battery in a piece of a cardboard. Hopefully it holds, it does. So this will now go in, it will be on the bottom, and hopefully this won't be too twisted, because currently it is, as you can see. So I'll have to make sure it's nice and square. Now if I don't want to use so much hot glue, I can put some piece of paper inside. I could maybe make a few sticks like this. And this would also help me to push in the glue. I have to make sure that the cable is on this side. But this will depend on the camera that you have. So I'll take the glue gun and a bunch of glue sticks. What I may need to do is put some hot glue on the bottom so that this plate doesn't move out. If you have a 3D printer you can obviously make this fake battery with that, just print it out because it is just a box. What I'll do now is put some hot glue from this side and then from this side and hopefully both parts will stick so this plate won't fall out. Let's put some hot glue from the bottom, fill in the holes, just don't go over the contacts. Let's see if I can push the hot glue in. I can a little bit, but it's sticking to the piece of paper, so I'll just leave it in. Put a new hot glue stick in. Uh, that was one mistake. Don't put the hot glue down. So making a fig battery from hot glue is not ideal. I think that's it. And then I will most likely also have to cut it off and hopefully I can get the cardboard off. You can mold the glue a little bit but you have to wait so it gets a bit white. So this will be really simple, I have the voltage set, I have my input, I just need to make sure that this is stable, set in place, this is also kind of stable, 
and then I have to find the position for the LED that will fit this hole. So let's get to it. And before I do, I'll just show you the simple circuit that this will make. So we have the voltage in, this will be USB, this is the voltage, plus minus, then something happens, and you have the output voltage, so let's say this is 5 volts, and this is 8 volts. So at 8 volts, we're at this point, and now I will add resistor and an LED, so this will be the LED, and this will be connected back to the minus. But at the same time, I want to take an output from this connection. And this will be my final output that I'll connect to here. So this will be the plug. So I need a soldering iron. This is a basic one. It will do the job. So in this case, it's really good because this hole lines up with the hole on the bottom. So I can simply put the resistor through and solder it. So just with that, I will have one solid side and I will need at least one more. So I need some flux. So this is a solid connection. I'll just take a couple of LEDs and cut the fit off or twist them off. I will put one fit in this hole because it fits. So this hole is filled. I can now put this like so and solder it on the opposite side. Hopefully this will hold, because this PCB is not of a good quality. So one side is done. I can also maybe do the other side, but I'll have to do it from underneath. But how you will solder this in place is up to you. This is what I have chosen. And in this case, because I've cut the PCB really snug, I don't have any space in front like I had with this PCB. As you can see, this was an easier solution because I could just bend the legs over the PCBs. I think this will hold. So I only have to fix one more side and for that Let's see what I'll use. So I have to use this PCB. Then I'll have the LED here. And the LED will connect back to this side. So I have to use something else. And then I also have to use two pieces of cable to connect it to here. So for the cable, I'll just use this. So let's see how this will look like. So I can maybe eyeball it a little bit. So I will position it like so, because the holes overlap, and I can put this one like so. So I will now solder this to the bottom side. So this is the LED. Let's just do a quick test if it fits. So this will fit, the LED fits. So I can solder it in this position. For the end, I need a piece of cable. This will be it. And I still need another piece of cable to connect the LED to the negative. So I'll use this piece of cable. So I have all the cables that I need. One will go down here. This will be for the LED. So like so. I'll solder it on the bottom. And then one piece will also go here. This will be the output negative. So I'll put it into the hole. 
and hopefully both of them will stay inside. So that looks like a solid connection. This one will go to the plus and hopefully I can also just put it in through the hole like so. And lastly we have to connect this to the negative of the diode. That should be good. So we can test it out. Plug in the 5 volts. The LED lights up. So it means we do have a contact. What is now the ending voltage? Let's take a look. So the voltage that I have set is 8.26 volts. And once I connect this to the outputs, it should be the same voltage. We have the same voltage, 8.26 volts. All that is left for me to do, connect the two pieces of wire to the plug. So now how is this plug wired? Well, we'll take the multimeter, put it on the continuous, so you hear the beeping sound. Put one end on the outside, this will be the negative, and touch one of the contacts. The long one should be negative, and it is. So we know the long one is the negative, and that is the side that will connect the minus output. Let's do the positive. So I is having a dummy battery good. Well, I just had to replace the battery in the camera to continue shooting. Otherwise, I could just continue shooting until I was done. I think this is good. I think we should do a test before we finish it up. We should see the light light up. We do. We should double check the voltage. So the voltage is still 8.26. That's good. And now let's try to connect the camera that has the dummy battery inside. As you can see, it's the DIY made dummy battery. Now let's plug this in and zoom out a little bit. So hopefully the camera will turn on, stay turned on and I will also be able to take pictures and take video. So I have to take out the cap. Take a picture. I could took a picture. What about the video? I can also record a video. As you can see. And now with this camera, I won't have to worry about running out of battery and constantly charging it and replacing it. And the only thing that I need to do now is to hot glue everything in place, leave the plug in, just wait for the power to go out. So I've unplugged it, glue everything together. So I'll glue this piece so it stays in place. Also around here and this connector so it doesn't come out. Same as with the soldering iron, you don't need the fancy one. You can use the cheap hot glue gun. I will leave all of the links to the items that I've used in the description down below and these will be affiliate links to Amazon. If you use the Amazon link to buy this, I will get some commission but it won't cost you any extra. But it will help the channel. So the glue is coming out and we can glue this in place. So I think that's it. I just have to wait for this to cool down and then I can pop out the lid. So it looks like this. If I plug it in, we have the light show up. And now what's good about this is that if I have any other camera that I want to use a fake battery on, I just have to make the dummy battery and this will power it. But as I said before, I wouldn't just trust this little doohickey if this somehow provides more voltage than what the camera needs, the camera may end up dead. So that is why 
when I get a different value transistors, I will remake this project and if it works, I will share it with you. That's it for this video. If you found it helpful, like, share and subscribe to see more DIY and tech content. Now instead of using a tripod like this one to make overhead shots, which also gets in the way of my chair and it doesn't really get over the head, we can use something like this. So this is what we just made, I'll have to tidy it up. And this is the camera that I have. 